Healing crystals, skincare routines, knitting a sweater, fitting in jeans. With Katie and Sarah, no need to worry, you're on a lady journey. Dina, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you thank for you. joining. Where did you come from? Are you, this is a long trek. I, I feel like a story is like the end of the world of New York. It yes. is, particularly for someone who lives in Jersey City. Yes. But I don't like well, saying that. You. I don't want thank people you. to feel bad. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. It's totally yeah. fine. <laughs> I know. I feel like I never mind getting on the train, especially because I don't really have a job and I don't really do anything in the day. You know, it's like I'm doing, I'm doing writing, but like when I get on the train, I'm like, Oh, here I go. Oh, it's like, uh, Rita, it's am like I commuting to my work. It like, almost feels like um, when you take the when you fly an airplane and you're like, well, this is time. I there's nothing I can do, so it's just free time. Yeah, I'm reading. That's my how I feel like books. travel is. Is like this is my time. Passengers. Yeah. Oh my god, no, I hate the train. I actually, I'm in a long distance relationship, and I used to date okay. someone who lived. In Ridgewood, and okay. I actually would much From rather. New Jersey? Yeah, yeah, that's a long distance. So I, I mm-hmm. much rather enjoy getting on a plane once a month than taking like the train yes. every day to go to Ridgewood. Oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> Did he ever it's come hilarious. to you? Um, uh, I don't remember where I lived at the time. <laughs> I don't think so. It was mostly. I know. Yeah. I always have. I've had relationships that that way, and you're like, wait, I feel like I'm the one that's going out there. All the time, right? Ridge How is this happening? New Jersey is. I mean, that's tough. It's like you're crossing into another. You wish the seven went all the way boroughs. to Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the person you're dating living now? Chicago, the burbs of Chicago. Whoa. Okay, okay. No, are you I... thinking of moving? Are them moving? This is a whole. It's a sticky okay. subject. Yeah, not, not a lady journey. The pro- Yeah, the problem <laughs> is he owns a house there, so it's like complicated. Gotcha. Oh, like, homeowner. Gotcha. Nice. I, love the flex. <laughs> I mean, it is nice, but like I work here, so yeah. I can't move. There. It's you know. Are right. you doing Zoom? Or are you going into an office now? Um, we go in, we have a one work from home day and then we go into the office. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize that. I thought you guys did everything from zoom. That was just pandy times. Clarify. Dina is a writer on the um, daily show. Daily show. Yeah. (laughs) I almost was thinking last week tonight, but then, and then I was getting sidetracked by the thought. I'm like, John Stewart's hosting on Mondays only. Yeah, exactly. What a while. That's a thing. I'm like, it's so funny that TV, like now you just do whatever. I love it. I love like, it. It's uh, open waters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like you can have a host for one day of the week or you don't have to do seasons anymore. You can have like two episodes a season where it used to be like TV was always like we have uh, this season and you have to do eight episodes per season. Yeah. Or, yeah. It's and now like it's like wild. we'll release whenever we feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I only started working there during the like guest host phase. So yeah. it's just all like, oh, this is just chaos. And, but oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Now, do you find I, I love the Daily Show and um, but but sometimes I do feel like it's hard to watch because unlike something like, you know, after midnight where it's just silliness and goofiness, it's a lot of the horrors that are going on in the world that sometimes you just want to pull the wool over your eyes and um and watch sex in the city reruns <laughs> well but you're a you, bad person <laughs> <laughs> well how do you deal with that like do you do you feel like a lot of stress from it from it or do you have like a kind of process to like decompress from like work time to now I'm now I'm going into funny or are you just kind of always consumed by the darkness? What's really funny is that the things that I consume in my free time are way darker than anything we cover. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like I, I've always been interested in like the dark news of the world. The and just like, Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the stuff we actually don't touch that. Ma- I mean, like we lightly cover. We're starting to. I mean. We're about to cover some heavy things, but like, especially during the guest host phase, nobody really wanted to talk about anything that serious, so we didn't really wade into anything. So it's only now that like we are sort of beginning to talk about heavy things again. Gotcha. Um, mm-hmm. But like, but I, I like that. Like, yeah. that's just how I've always, I'm into, I'm into the darkness. So yeah. yeah speaking of darkness, uh, new special, <gasps> Dark Little Whispers on Amazon. That was an amazing yeah. segue. You guys, have to, you guys have got to check this out. It's so exciting, Dina. Congratulations. Yeah, thank oh, you. thanks, guys. Why did I say thank you? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your work We're that all you've one. done. So. Thank you for your work that you've done. Now, when you released the special, um, what did you do anything? Were you able to like kind of participate in a celebratory practice like how did you mark the milestone for yourself no i dissociated immediately gotcha um, i love it yeah did you watch with f- friends and no. like a party just by yourself or did you not watch at all well the problem is i had to watch it a million times during the editing process gotcha. so i was right. so scarred by that 
Is it not horrific? Is, it's absolutely horrific. You're like, is that my lip? I know. Oh my! God. I didn't realize I fake <laughs> laugh at everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! So this is my so my editor actually spent like six hours removing me going between <gasps> jokes. I think you tweeted I that. It too. Yeah, and I'll be. I didn't know that I did that until he literally, there were literally like hundreds of instances of me doing it. And I still got a comment from someone pointing out the fact that I click and I sent the text to him and he was like, I took those out. So like, (laughs) oh my gosh. um, Yeah. You notice all these things and you're like, oh, can people see me from that angle? I didn't know that people could see me when I look like that. It's just a microscope that no one should be exposed to. That's why you kind of understand why celebrities end up like, Doing jigsawing their plastic face. surgery yeah. yeah because they no yeah. one should see themselves that much exactly yeah. it's and, he, it's heinous and now everyone does like everyone on social mirror, media like that's a technology we shouldn't have access to even totally yeah yeah well yeah because like now that we have to make all of our content and we edit our own videos there are times where i'm like i want to kill myself <laughs> yeah because this is it's i can't I can't watch myself this much. It's and really you bad. You get a heinous comment from a troll and you're like, you're right. That oh wasn't my, my best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my knees yeah. are fucked up. <laughs> yeah, we're all mentally ill because of the internet. It's, yeah. yeah. At least it's, it's equally affecting all of us now. Yeah, right. so. yeah, it's it's great. It's great. Now, so you so you no celebration. No cel- you just moved on with your life from the special. Yeah, well actually my friend uh, had like a watch party for him and friends and invited me and I did not go but it was nice to just get a FaceTime of like they all got like clown noses like it was a cute thing to watch from afar I know that really that was the most like that was really touching um but yeah no I just was like okay it's there now and now I'm moving moving on yes yeah do you often do that do you do you have like um you're just like okay accomplishment like moving on it's better to not dwell on it because it's like maybe a little triggering or uh, I mean, that was the first time I put a special out and, and yeah. like, I mean, to be honest, like I, it didn't go as how I wanted it to. So I think that was part of me dissociating okay. from yes, it. Yes, I gotcha. Yeah. What do you, and when you mean didn't go how you wanted it, in what way? Like look? Um, or no, feel? I mean, I think, well, I produced it. So gotcha. I think it like came out the best it could possibly do with the resources well, that it's I just had. Like, yeah. I always think it's fascinating in the artistic vision. You know what you want. You see it, and then when you execute it, you're like, it's not exactly how I visioned it, but I'm. this is its own thing, and I'm going to accept it, because what else can I do? Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, it's not a failure, it's not a failure, but it's just like, I, it's so amazing to me like, where you're like, I can't understand why I can't make it feel the way I want it in my head. It's like drawing something, and you're like, why does then that look like what it yeah. The object is. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm amazed actually by anyone who creates a very specific like movie or any piece of art. Like how do they even communicate to the people working with them? Like what's in their head? I, that's why I get why certain artistic people are tyrants and horrific yeah. to work with because you kind of have to abuse people to get your vision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I support that. Yeah. I do too. Well, you have to do what it takes. Exactly. <laughs> You're a genius. Ooh, Kubrick yeah. was a little mean to what's her face. Well, it's one of the best movies of all time. So. Exactly, you got the performance <laughs> of a lifetime. Yeah, so for we, fear. we've talked about that on this podcast so many times. Oh, really? Stanley Kubrick abusing Shelley Duvall. Yeah, well, it's we're actually, related. it's fine. She doesn't need to have that level of abuse. But I yeah. think it was a little debunked. Like she has interviews where oh, she's like, "No, really? it was great to work with oh, him." Oh my gosh, this is no, this is huge for Lady Journey. Yeah, wow. <laughs> this is great. I, we've revisited that. Many times. <laughs> That's and so now funny. Finally, the truth has come out. <laughs> <laughs> I produced my special as well yeah. and I had very similar experience where you know I was I was happy when it came out and then I also did like you know a ton of press where I was just pushing myself to like do every podcast and so it was at the end of the month that I felt like it didn't really come out the way that I wanted it to and that disparity like just took me to a dark place right. where I was like oh did I fail you know it's just things get so I mean for me I'm just only speaking for myself but I have a tendency to really just like blow things out of proportion and but you know I, I, now in retrospect looking back I'm like you know what it was great it was it was what it was it was my first special I was proud of myself for producing it myself and now I'm like okay there were many mistakes many mistakes 
that I didn't even have like a showrunner or a director. I'm like like telling people like you do eight minutes. Uh, I don't know, do five, do six, yeah. Yeah. whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> um, but but I'm glad I'm glad I did it. I am glad I did it myself. It was a learning experience, but I don't think I will self produce again. Yeah, like it is like just making something for your first time. That's never going to be perfect, and it's like you yeah. take that for the next thing, and it's like it's no it's not worth beating ourselves up over it. Yeah. it yes, and I've yeah. also always heard in the creative process that you have to stay out of the results. Ah. That's a good one. Meaning like once it's done, it, you've put it in the ether and it's time to, it's time to move on. Yeah. You that can't, was, cause there's nothing else you can do. So yes, you Go can't, God. Yes, God. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot force. Cause there's times where like in my mind, I just finished special and my, I'm like, this is better than the first one. I'm so proud of it. I feel like I, there's details that I really liked about it, but then I'm like, be prepared for it not to be received as as maybe it won't have the reception that you think it deserves. Right. And there's nothing you can do as long as you liked it, then that should be fine. Yeah. 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 Are you editing your special now? No, I've got, um, Patrick Holbert is, and then, uh, we're working on the audio mixing. So it's almost done. And that's the annoying factor is like, how long did yours take from shot shot to, um, uploading when it got, went onto Amazon? I mean, like, so I shot it in December of, I guess, two years ago. It took like a year. I yeah. Was, yeah. It's just like wow. the turnaround takes forever and you're like, I need yeah. to get out. Yeah. yeah. And then you're, you're like, oh my God, this joke doesn't even apply anymore because like everything yeah, changes so, so fast. Topical. Exactly. Yeah. And then you're like, oh my God, now everyone else is talking about this. So yeah. then it feels like this is irrelevant or like I'm just doing hacky material and you're like, I swear to God, it was the first person. That- <laughs> Everybody's yeah. like doing the abortion joke. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's got the same joke, and you're like, "No, yeah, that was my gem." I'm I, closer. I mean, the timing of mine was especially odd because, like, I mean, it came out shortly after like the October seventh stuff, and like, oh, yeah, I yeah, obviously yeah. talk a lot about like being Arab and Muslim stories, and like, it just it, seems like you're not addressing it. Well, it almost to me, I was like, oh, my God. I so I, I criticized the way I grew up a lot. So yeah. I didn't I was worried of people like watching it and yeah. being like, see, evil Muslims. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Even she hates it. Right. Yeah. And so I had that in my head, but that didn't turn out to really be a thing. But more so, like, it's the first time I ever like saw myself as like an Arab comedian because of the things people were telling me not to post. Oh, oh yeah. Like yeah. I'd never really felt affected by like my identity in terms of like the business up until like s- specific moments where like people who are supposed to be on my side are like, it's probably safest not to post jokes about like Islam or like being yeah. Arab. I'm like, that's crazy yeah, yeah, to yeah, like yeah. hear like, that. Also don't mention that you're a woman. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's like to think that a war somehow has anything to do with me doing jokes is like right about like uh, my, I waxed my arm. You know? yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's yeah, I, it, it was weird. Now let's let's backtrack a little bit because I'm really um, my curiosity has been piqued when you said about your dark interests. Oh yeah, I want to get into what are you into? What are these like? Are you into like true crime or like what? What's the extent? I mean, not true crime necessarily, but like just the dark side of like history and like the way our government works okay, and like borderline yes. conspiracy theories. Or um, like, I hate that phrase, but like I grew up like I yeah. know what you mean. Yeah, maybe there should be a different terminology because I feel like there's a sector of people that have ruined. It's been ruined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, like the whole thing with Epstein, like that wasn't a theory. <laughs> people were like, involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why sometimes when people like shit on QAnon, you're like, well. There is some yeah. truth to it. And that's how they get you. They really yeah. win. They really win. With the Q tips. The Q tips. Yeah. Or the drips. Yeah. That's what they're called. I, I, <laughs> where you're like, I don't think it's as broad as it is that maybe like Tom Hanks isn't the head of it. Right, 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 right. But right, right. There is some truth to it. There's there is actually a huge pedophile ring. Totally. Oh yeah. 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 That influential people are a part of. There's things that go on under the surface. I find it really fascinating. And I've I've listened to a few different podcasts just about that. I'm 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 a like a true crime like okay. junkie, you know. And um but but that's what fascinates me is like the things that are going on under the surface all the time that you're like Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Like you think your neighbor like that's just Joe and then you find out he's like 
you know, buried uh, 30 people underneath. Yeah. And that's, that's a great parallel for how I feel about the government. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh yeah. no, yeah. they're all these the secret wars. Yeah. 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 It's the same thing. I'm just like, oh, what's, I just, I've always wanted to know like what reality is, like what is the truth? Because I guess, because I had religion shoved down my face my yeah. whole life, I was particularly interested in like, well, if I'm going to follow these rules I don't agree with, I want to know that it's real. Is there yeah, a God? Yeah, what's like, the basis of it? Yeah. Where do they come from? Why are we following? Sometimes some rules are arbitrary where you're like, are so we're just following this just because right because somebody said so it is hard to like look back in like the lens of history where like one thing that's coming to mind for me is one thing i i found really fascinating was like the propaganda the like atomic bomb propaganda of like they would be like showing these videos to kids of like a little turtle cartoon and it's like um uh, roger roger knew when he heard the siren it was time to run for the bomb yeah. and you're like that's traumatic yeah 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 and we're looking back like how how fucked up was that? But then it's like, there's got to be stuff like that going on now. It and where ends. is it? And what oh, is it? Well, you know? growing up in Texas and Texas history, we always talked about the Alamo and that like these guys were heroes. And then you realize they were actually on the wrong side of history. Yes. Because Santa Ana was against slave labor. And then the more you read about it, you're like, are they heroes? Or are they just weird loner dudes that were alcoholics in a fort? Yeah, and, it was January and lost. 6th. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, the revisionist history is something that you're just I mean, it knocks you back when you learn that it's even a thing. It feels like Fahrenheit 451. Yeah. Like, and then you think like, oh, history is always written by the winners. And then history gets written on top too. of that wrong history. So yeah. it's just like layers of wrong history. And you're yeah. like, we don't actually know anything. Well, we don't even know what happened. Can yeah. I bring up a really great, excellent Twitter thread that I just read? So from the Super Bowl halftime show, Alicia Keys, first note out of her mouth was not great or it wasn't on key or whatever which is weird that's her name and um, <laughs> and um that's already been wiped off the internet and this guy was like isn't this fascinating that in the future this will i think it's called the berenstein effect or whatever where some groups of people will remember it this way and then other people will remember it that way and there will be an argument about it but because we're not even recording history properly so we're already wiping truthful events even though they're as you know benign as I hope that's the like right a, of the a, a Super Bowl show. Note, yeah. yeah, flat note. But it, if we're doing that on flat notes, we must be doing that on bigger topics. It happens all the time. The memory yeah. hole, they call it. Yes. The memory hole. I've never heard that term before. Also Mandela effect. The yes. Mandela effect. Oh, yeah. what's that one? The Mandela effect is, isn't that the thing where they say that some people remember that Nelson Mandela died and some people remember that he had died at a different time? Yeah. Oh. And, and it they're calling it people are claiming that there's like a schism. This is a really very <laughs> deep time continuum. Yeah. There's something. like a schism where like something actually two two parallel realities exist. And some people are remembering a different one. That one's pretty out there. That right. one's pretty out there. I don't know that that's one that I'm on board with, but there's one about that with like the movie Shazam, right? Or wait, no, not even, I think I'm doing it wrong. It's not, there's like a Shaq movie that everyone remember. Right. Yeah. And what's the thing about it? Sinbad. I love that Lex. Sinbad. Oh, some people. This is where Lex is shining. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Sinbad is a genie in a movie that even he claims he wasn't, but there's there's proof. People come up with like I have the VHS. Oh, Sinbad okay, yeah. claims he was a genie in the movie. Says he was never a genie, but he movie, claims he wasn't. Like, yeah. Kids are like, I remember owning that movie growing up and watching. He's like, I was never a genie. Uh, finally, on the internet, people are like, Look, I have proof that it existed. Okay, I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that in the notes. I can't. I don't. I cannot regurgitate that. But it's Sinbad claims he was not in a movie where he played a genie, but people have proof that he was in the film, and they have shirts. That is a wild conspiracy. That is pretty wild. Yeah, but I think it's also just because we're, you know, it's like we're so saturated with information all the time, and you know, uh, even I think millennials at least we have a little bit of a leg up i think it's really challenging for baby boomers because they're so like used to seeing something on the news and being like that's the news yeah yeah i've had it happen to me where it's like i'm scrolling tiktok i'm scrolling tiktok and then suddenly a fact is presented to me and i'm like oh that's interesting and then i look 
I have a moment of like critical thinking where mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's not a fact. Right. That somebody's saying something, but it's being presented as news and subconsciously I perceive it as that. Then, you know, you're spreading. Yeah. Two yeah. weeks later, you're at a dinner party. You're like, well, Tom Hanks is a rapist. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but like, that's how rumors get started. But then I like, do you remember the moment? Have you had this moment where I realized one day that like the news is like, selected like the news has such an illusion of objectivity for everyone where it's like that must be the most important news of the day and that's why they chose it right oh no they're just selecting things for whatever agenda or reason they're picking it yeah there'll be like i'll you'll see online again and then you're like do i trust this where they're like why isn't anyone talking about this right now and it's a huge news issue yeah but it's not in the forefront or how about when the news does a friday dump so mm-hmm. they know that we're all ready to go to the weekend. And so they'll dump some really big a nugget that they want people to just brush over really fast. Right. Yeah. And so because we're like, I, whatever, I got a party to go to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not coming back till Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of forget about it. So it's just like the way that the news is presented to us is also it's factually wrong or yes. it's manipulative exactly do you yeah fine now do you have like what are your news sources that you go to for work do you are you like going back comparing yeah where do you guys get bias? your sources if you're dealing with this like do you just do headlines like ap news or something if i found bbc i used to really bbc i is like pretty objective of like what's going on in america versus like cnn which you know clear bent or like, you know, I'm thinking of that sh- that Stephen Colbert cartoon show where it's like the four different news yeah. organizations um, tuning out the news. Right, yeah. right. It depends who's writing the piece. Like different writers get assigned different things. And we do have a research team. So like they're kind of the ones so picking pull, the sources. Do they pull the pieces for you? Or do you come in being like, I, I have a, I want to do a bit about this so not so like for headlines it depends on what the headline of the day is obviously and then for those we're kind of usually just writing jokes based on whatever the headline is there's not yeah. too much digging into the headline i mean things are also changing right now because it was guest host before and now it's like a totally new show yes. so we're still figuring all that out but mostly it's like what's the news of the day and then uh if there's like a larger think piece like for the monday shows then it's the research team just they're pulling the research gotcha. um and it's we don't really cho- it's like depends on what John wants or the correspondent host wants. So like yeah. we're just kind of there to like write the jokes and like okay. structure it. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. When you look for news, what's your source that you go to? Um, uh, I like, it's actually a great question. Cause I feel like, Oh my God, I don't, I trust so little now. Um, yeah. I like, uh, the intercept a little bit um i think matt taibbi is a really good journalist or at least i try to go for people who i think have like really good faith in wanting to report truthfully even if they're wrong it's more important to me that like oh if they're wrong it's not because they're trying to manipulate me it's just because they're wrong yeah 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 yeah. i mean mistakes happen you know it's like especially when you're on the cutting edge of something and you don't have all the information oh my god i remember one time i I thought Tom Petty had actually died and then I was like, rest in, rest in peace. And then yeah. he, he still had like 16 hours left or something. I was oh my like, God. Oh, my bad. That's why I love your misinformation campaign. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So Dina, what's your lady journey that you're on right now? Are you in into anything like self care? Like what's your mundane thing that you're into? Well, we, we were getting into the, the hair. Yeah. Oh. I think your hair looks good in actual texture. And then you've put in some blonde pieces. Yes. That Thank you were you. questioning. Yeah. Well, I I wanted, I initially wanted like a grayish, like white. Ooh, yeah. yes. And then I went to one woman who was like, you're going to have to come back multiple times for that because your oh. hair is black. And it's just, and I think she was wrong because I'm pretty sure if you're skilled enough, you can do it once. But anyway, yeah. so she was like, let me just give you sort of like an ashy brown. Mm. And then she did it. And I actually really like that color. This is the first time I got it done. So then I went back to a different person and I showed her a photo of how my hair was that time I was like I just want this color and with my mouth I said ashy brown because that's how that other hairdresser described it Uh. and then I guess that woman even though I showed her a picture of the color she heard ashy brown and then gave me this and I was we just had like a fight about it yeah Um, yeah it's I mean it looks great I love it I love it on you but I know, but it's not an ashy brown. No, it's, no. it's definitely what I would call a full blonde. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just I'm just crazy about damage, so I'm like I'm not even gonna get it corrected. I'm just gonna wait however long it takes to yeah. Yeah. took her out. But 
Um, I remembered how, I mean, I wish I had the photos of it, but did you guys ever show your hairstylist growing up just like insane, impossible hair cuts oh, that uh, were I'm impossible? I'm still doing it. Absolutely. I'm still doing it. And I always am like, I don't get why I don't look like her. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, like, I have a, I'll be having a blowout with a team every day. Um, I know. Cause I had a, I had a thing where I have very wavy hair. I found out cause yeah. I had long hair for years yeah. And so I just didn't ever have any issues with it being wavy. I just thought, oh, I have straight hair or whatever. I throw it back up. Then I started getting it cut and I just, my hair, it's really wild. It will just, when it naturally dries, like even if I blow dry it, um, I'm not laying down or anything. I'm sitting straight up. It will dry like this. Like it flips so hard and it's just this one side. It's like a couple. Oh, I know. Yeah. And so, and I went to hairdresser after hairdresser. I'm like, I think maybe I'm getting it cut wrong. And like, everyone was like, this is the texture of your oh, hair. This is the texture of your hair. And I was like, oh, that's so wild. So it's limited so much of what I can do because you have to just work with the texture. Right. You think like, oh, I'm going to bring in this picture. And, right. and it's like, oh, when you when you start going into the texture, it's like, oh, no, you can get this cut or this cut. Or you can like be a maniac and spend an hour or two hours blow drying your hair Flapping. every day. Yeah, so I'm like, always like, I want it to look like this. And I also want to do nothing to it. Yeah, like, right. yeah. I like right. to air dry in the winter. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's tricky. I'll have the thing where you're like, I guess, yes, you gave me the haircut. But then what I'm wearing in my age, I look like I'm just selling insurance in the middle of us. Like it didn't look edgy to me. Like sometimes I find um Car a Karen haircut can borderline punk. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You in a weird like, way. I'm heading out for my metal show, but then you, you see catch yourself in Target. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The like stacked I'm, bob. Yeah, that I'm want to talk to the manager. The stacked bob is very close to the undercut. It's like it's just a few Yes, it's, it's a, a very it's a TJ Maxx away. <laughs> it's a very, it's Wait, so what cute. is the stacked bob? The stacked bob is like the Karen cut where it's like like oh, oh okay yeah, okay it's like okay a oh under. it's the worst yeah, yeah. like a wedge yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah I have really thick hair too so I know I I would get that and then it would just be like flipping out too. Well, my theory is like the punk rock girls back in the eighties that had it just kept it and then they grew into. Karens that's the, um, in their middle yeah. age their and that's what suburban behavior of like f thrashing at yeah. Starbucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like the whole yeah I'm in that right now because I've been Pinteresting haircuts mm -hmm. and then also I want to go short but I did this to Adrian one time I went short and then we I, you can't have a podcast with two ladies with short haircut <laughs> what it just, it just seems like then that's our show that's our show two short ladies hair. with a bob <laughs> No. I'm actually going I think I'm going longer I think I'm gonna well, I'm starting to grow back out again it's like wearing a hat and then you come to your friend group and then another person in your friend group's wearing a hat and you're like well there can only be one person <laughs> in a hat today like we can't yeah. all be wearing hats yeah especially if it's like a fedora or oh god like, oh both of us <laughs> oh my god that's so sweet if you grow your hair out just so Sarah can cut it that's really sweet thank you yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well I'm just growing mine out at this point because I can't deal with the flipping anymore oh, because okay, it's okay, like okay. It's gotten so bad that like when I need it, I, I get I have to get a cut every two months. Otherwise, it starts flipping out way harder. And then like I I cannot go to a show without completely drying my hair with like the round brush hair dryer because it's like I've seen videos of myself and uh, you know like you get these great tapes where you're like oh my god the seller and then it's like hello oh, yeah <laughs> I'm like no but that length so. is tough too because you can't really just tie it back right yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it's tough but you you have longer hair now than I've seen you with in a while you're growing it back out or yeah usually I'm like your length and I don't know what happened I think I just was tired of paying for haircuts and so I just let it go and I yes. kind of like I had long hair my whole life like down to my ass forever yeah. Yeah. so it was like um, it was like a it was like a rite of passage for me to cut it because like my mom was the one who never let me cut it so yeah. I was like fuck you mom I'm gonna cut my hair short and <laughs> yes. so but now I like don't have that vengeance anymore so I, I feel like I can let it a good length this one really yeah you have great hair I mean you have gorgeous that's so hair. nice of you. I grew up just like hating it and only wanting straight hair. Like I grew up, all my best friends were Asian with just beautiful oh straight God. black hair. Coveted. Oh beautiful. my God. And so that's what I wanted. And they were like, no, I want curly hair. I'm like you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. And so, <laughs> a nightmare. Um, but yeah, I think I might rock it like this for, for a little while. But I'm with that's you great. with the, like, I'm on a strike with the haircutting because like, 
It's five hundred. The prices. prices. Yeah, it's. And I'm trying to. I'm. I've seriously been thinking about going on YouTube and just learning how to cut and dye my own hair. And then you're. You're like, can I? Should I do this? Yeah. Next should, you is know, this you crazy? Have like, you have like a like a black neck. <laughs> no, I support that. In high school, actually, I got obsessed with hair cutting. So my friends would let me cut their hair, and like, yeah. you could totally do it. Especially think, if you don't want something like. I mean, if you want like a cut like this, I think that's complicated. Yeah. Like a Vidal like, like, layers. Like a, yeah. Yeah. This is like feathered, but but I do like. I had black hair when I was in college I loved it oh my gosh like just and I would just do like dye I would just dye it and it was easy you know just get the box dye you have to do like a color like that that works where you're like okay black like there's nothing when you get like get into like the red like that's when it gets but I loved having black hair I felt like snow white you know I was like oh my gosh like kind of like goth (gasps) you should go black again you think so yeah I loved it It, it, it's such a fun like if you have like a bob too a very simple easy Oh, yeah. Bob that you can take care of but now so you're going into the office for work what's your do you have like um work wear are you like a work wear person or you're just like whatever jeans just roll in and f- keep it comfy yeah I mean what I'm wearing now is pretty much how I do it um yeah. nobody really cares at all sometimes That's I nice. do sweatpants and I'm like am I should I do this yes. I don't know oh if I gosh. should but you like you have to be comfy to be creative well the thing is also that the writers are like sort of isolated from everyone so like w- no one's going to see me except for the writers for most of the day. And yeah. like, you know, we're all garbage. So, so do you, you don't write as a group. You go individually, right? Um, well, there's like a sort of it depends. Like for like the morning jokes for just like the headline jokes, um, we're just at our computers and we can choose to like go in pods, as we call them, and like yeah. work with multiple writers or you could just work on your own. But then for like other pieces, usually be like two writers assigned to a thing. Um, so it varies. But like, yeah, we're not just like in a giant blob writing okay. together all day. It's great. I mean, it's like, you know, back when we used to all go into open mics, you know, it's like, well, this is your job, whatever. Wearing jeans, getting out there, being comfortable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think um, if I had an office job, I would dress up a little bit, but just because I would be like excited to have somewhere to go yeah, yeah. But that's part of it yeah. it's like oh this is my one opportunity to like have something I actually need to dress up for yeah, yeah it's like you know in during COVID I felt like I got so much lounge wear and then now that's all I wear when I'm at home I have like three pairs of pants and then I'm like okay now I put my out pants on yeah <laughs> <laughs> But it's but it's nice though. I mean, I have like a fantasy of like this is my fantasy of like I get up, I get my coffee, I'm yeah. heading heading into the office. I think in my fantasy, I'm not even like um involved Writing. in creating. I'm like <laughs> yeah, I'm like a financier. Like here Same I way. go. <laughs> I don't actually have a job. It's just the fantasy of going to the work. I think yeah. In the morning. yeah. Like, no, yes, I do I like that a little bit. I do like waking up and getting the coffee and like I have important work to do. But yeah. it's, and getting yes. your like desk accoutrements ready. Yeah. Like, uh, I got my notepad, I got my pens, and then as soon as they're like time to write, you're like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I Ooh, no, coffee that. break. What's your coffee? <laughs> what's your coffee routine in the morning? Do you get it out? It's so bad. Yeah, I do this every Where, morning. Where's this from? This is from Lackawanna Coffee in Jersey City. Oh, um, it's it's so cute. I love yeah, it. They're really cute. It's really good. Um, and I spend seven dollars every morning and I really sh- it's just so I, wasteful. Know, we talked about this. Coffee treat puts yourself. you on another level for writing. Writing, I think like yeah. I when you make coffee at home, I'm like, OK, I got about I got about 90 minutes right. that I can do it. when I get a coffee like this out. I'm like, I'm good for the day. Yeah. I'm having a day like it's the caffeine level is so much stronger when you get it out because they have the industrial things. I mean, I wouldn't even know because I've never made coffee. at home. <laughs> but, um, coffee changed my life. Actually, I only started drinking coffee when I was like 25. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm. oh, my whole personality up until this point was just a lack of coffee. Yeah. Like I felt like that with yeah. cigarettes. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I started smoking. I was like, where have you really? been? Like, <laughs> we were made for each other. Do you smoke? No. Okay. I stopped. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like a pack a day and I loved it and I still do. And occasionally I've been known to dabble. But that's every a secret. Now and then, every spring. It's every a spring. Spring. <laughs> a little, a little something for the fresh air. Yeah. Oh my God. Little... I, I picked it up. I picked up smoking during the lockdowns because I was so bored. <sighs> Isn't it cool? I, I love it. shit for this, but like it's. No, it's cool. No, it's cool. It's cool. It feels great. It feels great. And you get like a little buzz right before your stomach cramps horrifically. You get that little buzz where you're like, it's better than vaping. Vaping's like this. Oh, it doesn't look cool at all. This is, I mean, look. It's hot. You look so hot right now with just doing that. (laughs) 
Do yeah. you smoke now? No, I did yeah. it during the pandemic and I loved just a it. Pandemic. I loved just I was staying at my my hometown. So you didn't get home. addicted. No, because I only had one every, um, like, one, not every night, but, like, every other night, maybe, yeah, yeah. and I would come to my oh, mom's. I'm so jealous of those types. Oh, yeah. I don't, oh, I don't have an addictive personality. Yeah. I'm, like, oh. I guess thankful for that. Maybe coffee. Yeah. I might be addicted to coffee now, but. You know, what's your coffee? Do you, do you get, like, just black coffee with drink with yeah. milk? Oh, my God. So this is a Turkish latte. Ooh, oh, my God. Oh that my sounds God. amazing. It's, Turkish latte. That's, I've oh. had Turkish coffee. It's out of control. The, it's like it's almost like Vietnamese coffee. Yeah, as yeah. Well. Where you're like, and I might as well just do lines of blow. <laughs> oh my god! So wait, it's what so is intense. It? Is it really strong. It's just really strong. So this one, That's it's right. like regular espresso, but like the Turkish part is just they put like cardamom and cinnamon and oh, spices yum. and stuff, and I just fucking love that. But you're right that like Turkish coffee itself, it's like much stronger than. Yeah. And um, oh, amazing! Oh, that's is that the great. one where they warm up in the sand? I don't even know. I've seen that on TikTok. Sounds racist, though. Like you said, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> like that's like, that's definitely Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, that's the Montana they way They make of it doing with it. sand, right? Yeah. The Turks. Um. <laughs> um, do they have Lackawanna coffees in, in the city? Or is it just like a Jersey I City? They, I haven't actually I looked it Turkish up. Coffee. I'm dying to try I'm this I'm Oh, you know what? My favorite coffee house now in the city is Kawa, Q-A-H-W-H. This Yemeni coffee and tea house. <gasps> and they have Yum. shit like this. Oh yes, mm. I'm gonna try it. Where is that? Kawa, everybody, check it out. There's one in Williamsburg, and I believe they just very recently opened one in the West Village, like near the cellar. Okay. Oh, so, perfect. Check That's it out. so Williamsburg to getting a little coffee and and going around getting a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. Book at a bookseller and just taking a photo and of yourself, <laughs> but not reading. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I, here I am, <laughs> Del Toyeski. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that, and having a cigarette. Oh yes. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. I want to see I like Cafe Ravola, is that how you pronounce it? Next to the cellar. Oh yeah. Rivoli? Rivoli or something? Reggio? Reggio. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What that is place it? is so cute. Yeah. Uh, but you you can't you can't sit outside because you just get accosted oh, every thirty yeah. seconds of like panhandling. Yeah. Or it's, worse, I comedians. Know, I, I being like, Do you want to see a comedy show? <laughs> yeah. They're right on that corner. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's awkward. I know you have to go inside, but they have great desserts there too. It's great desserts, but I like the vibe there. It's I've hung out there before, and I'm just like, it's just like a nice coffee house. It's just unfortunate, like there's just a wayward. I don't know. That whole area, it's tough. I I just sound, it sounds so bad. Just like tons of homeless people. Well, that area is so crazy. Because then if it's not that, then it's like um, an NYU person like hammered, you know. Hello. Exactly. You know, wanting to hang out and chat. Um, But yeah, I'm a big coffee drinker. I've been into black coffee lately. Just like, I think, I know. It's something about it. But then I started going towards oat milk someone left julia john stayed at my place and she left a big thing of oat milk in there and i've been pouring that in and that stuff is good the it's really milk, good no guys no i have to tell everyone the okay, oat milk please have you ever let a bottle of oat milk just sit and you get and you can see the layer of oil <gasps> separate it's, it's so just oil. oil i thought That's you were so about good, yeah, probably yeah. i thought you were about to say that it's desecrating countries oh i know <laughs> i was like no, no. we can't talk about that it's responsible like, oh, for I'll drink oil <laughs> I know that oat milk is bad. I know it's bad for you. I knew it was before I started drinking it. And I drink almond milk, which is probably the other worst one that you can get. That's the one I go with because like, so I'm a freak about ingredients and Califia almond milk seems to be like the cheapest, safest, not the cheapest, but like. They don't have any of like the sorghum. Yeah, sorghum yeah, carrageenan. Yeah. Oh, I've, trust me, I know all about the carrageenan. What's wrong about good. the carrageenan? Well, so, I don't know, it's supposed to be possibly an irritant if you have stomach issues, mm. okay. which I had for a long time, so I was always just, like, looking out for ingredients that might make it worse. I don't know if it's, like, true or not, but I still try to avoid it, and a lot of the milks have it, but Califia doesn't. Oh, good, good. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I mean, almond milk, I, you do feel bad, because it's, like, you know, it's taking a gallon of water for one almond and then you're it's taking a gallon of almonds for one drip of the almond milk but it's better than cow's milk you yeah. know you see like the cows I'm... hooked up to the milkers and you're like that, yeah that can't be right yeah <laughs> but i love it yeah i love cow's milk well yeah I i'm not a big too. milk person but i i will drink cream i, I love a little oh, cream, cream. Oh, yeah. too. oh my gosh have you ever done the bullet the bullet eating coffee which is where you oh with butter you take the i butter. tried it once I, 
I did a bulletproof coffee, which was like a keto mix of like kind of like powder, but it was like high fat and I, you blended it and it was like cinnamony and it was really lovely. It was like a yummy yeah. kind of like, but the fat is supposed to help you. It helps the caffeine stay in your system for Whoa. longer. So it gives you like a longer buzz. I which just is like valuable. the butter part of that. Yeah, I love like butter. butter. That Any sounds butter. good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The bullet, I think it was called, this was like in the 2010s, like 2012 or something when it was popular. It was like, you put you put the butter in it and then it does the same where it just like keeps it in it. But it's like kind of like, ooh, yummy. Like latte gone, yeah. gone crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds really good. Maybe I could do that at home. Just stick a butter in oh, coffee. Now, are you, yeah. Do you ever do like a pastry with a coffee? Are you a dessert person? I'm not really a dessert person, but in the morning with this coffee, they have an everything croissant with <gasps> jalapeno cream cheese inside of it. And oh my so, gosh, oh, yum. Cooked no. inside or it's like pumped in after it's cooked? Uh, I mean, it's not, it's just like, the cream cheese is like fresh inside of it, okay, so they probably okay. just inject it after. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about like the ham and cheese ones. That gotcha. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Not like that. I yeah. love a savory pastry. Oh my, gosh. my gosh, a savory breakfast pastry. Yeah. Ham and cheese croissant. I've been really into um, like a quiche lately. Oh, I do quiche all the time. Oh my god, a quiche. I like a quiche, and I feel like um, it's I don't know where you're like who. Am I? <laughs> when am you I order a Duchess? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Why yeah, does it yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. it's like, am I high maintenance? But it's not that hard of a thing to make. It's just basically an omelet and a pie dish. It's an egg yeah. pie. Yeah. yeah. It's an egg pie. Exactly. Yeah. You should call it that. Then you sound more egg like. Pie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Down to earth. <laughs> I, I get them pre-made at Trader Joe's. I get Ooh. I just get like a little one. Just pop it in. It's like five bucks. And you're like, that's like a bagel in the I've morning. I've had that before. Yeah. yeah. When, I have, awesome. when I eat eggs in the morning. I feel better. Oh my god! I did. Um, I pickled some onion and I put that on top of my eggs today. I did a little meal prepping. I'm kind of oh a trad gosh. wife right now, minus <laughs> the the yeah. look. Yeah, I love that. I yeah, love that about you. <laughs> I love I love the trad wives like the great. Um, the great inconsistency of like, I'm a trad wife that who's also an influencer, which is a job. Yeah. yeah. It's technically a job. It's but, a lot of work. Yeah. And you never see them like scrubbing the toilets or anything. It's just like, I'm making, um, I'm making peanut donuts. But- right. Peanut yeah. butter and jelly sandwiches from scratch. There's one I follow. Nana, Nana, Nana Smith, Nara Smith. The Mormon? Yes. The Mormon propaganda. Who's married to the model guy. No, is oh, she is technically she a trad wife? Because I thought that she was just a model that she likes cooking. They're lumping her Mormonism in. in they're, they're lumping her in. They're yeah. lumping her in because of the Mormon faith. Because I almost put her in the category of like hot. Do you pay attention to this? Interest. Are you a TikTok person? No, I don't look at it. I try not to. And, That's okay. But yeah. I think I should just mostly for work because I'm like, I don't know what the trends are. I don't know what the memes are. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's like a culture blast to your brain. It is like just getting culture injected into your Yeah, it's heroin mind. Right. intravenous yeah. culture. That sounds good. I should get it's, on it. It's kind of fun. It's delightful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I haven't read. I haven't read in years. I have, yeah, <laughs> haven't attempted. But yes, tradition. It's. I just found out Tradwise is the breakdown of traditional wives. Yeah. Yes. Truncated version. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of strange in a way because it's like, well, we are all doing that. We're just, it's just chores. And you have to do that whether you're or married or misogyn- not. Yeah, involved in misogyny <laughs> right, or not. Right, <laughs> right, you're right. Um, now, I'm reading a great book right now. It's called The Wishing Year. This is a little bit of a non sequitur, but I wanted to shoehorn this in here. It's a woman. She is an author. She's a great writer. She goes through this experiment where she is... Um, she, She's very skeptical of like this kind of magical thinking world of like manifestation. Mm. And, and she has a philosophy background and and also like a religious background. But she she's mainly a writer. But she decides she goes through this experiment through the whole year where she's like, OK, I'm wishing for three things. I'm going to partake in the practice of wishing and like exploring it through various cultures and to see if it like comes out in the year. And in the end of the year, all three of her wishes did come true, albeit she does recognize that, like, one of the things she wishes for is, like, a house, and she ends up getting the money from, like, a member, her a family member. She's a white woman. She recognizes, like, the socioeconomic implications of um, having inherited... Uh, yeah, like, having inherited wealth. And I like that about the book, because mm-hmm. she she's very raw in the fact that she's like, well, I don't know... Did the universe give this to me? Let's be honest. <laughs> or my parents. My parents. <laughs> where, 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 
where are you on that? Do you wish? What is your what is your perspective on magical thinking, manifesting? Are you into it? What yeah, like goals and right. Yeah. I don't do any of that. Yeah, but I don't totally discount it. It depends what like brand is coming under because yes. like the one that's like buy our crystals and this will come true I'm like okay this is stupid garbage that yeah, like it's manipulating people yeah. yeah so I don't like that but I do strongly believe in the power of our minds to shape our reality mm. because it's like positive thinking it's a real thing like all this power of now stuff it's like that those can have real positive effects on your life and if like if you if you think positively is going to make your life better, even if it's like saying I'm going to do this, like I believe in the power of that. Yes. But I don't like have a vision board or like I believe in it more of like on a psychological basis of like yes. yeah. I love that. I love that. I mean, I still do I, I'm the, I'm the same. I think I, I I really agree with you, and I think kind of the conclusion of the book was sh- that's what the lady was. It's just like if thinking positively helps you feel better, then do it. Or you also don't have to, but you know, it, it's there for you. But I also still am really drawn to like vision boarding stuff of like it does just seem fun. pretending to enjoy, like I'm doing a spell. Yeah. That sounds nice. Yeah. No, that's really it's kind fun. Of fun. I kind right? of, it's creative. Yeah. yeah. Creative. Yeah. It's like the collaging aspect of it, I think is enjoyable. Right. Well, I, I totally agree. Cause I do, I'm like, am I, cause I get in the habit, we've talked about this and I think you said that with the, your therapist is you feel like making a vision board is on your way to create work and yes. you're like, it's actually distracting you from the work that you <gasps> need to do. Oh yeah, do. you're like, yeah. I don't need to write my script. I cut out three magazines. Oh right, <laughs> yeah. that's funny. It becomes like a procrastination <laughs> right. tactic. Yeah. We were talking about like journal and tr- like journaling where write down your goals and f- pretty handwriting and get the markers for it and you're like, do you need to do that? And it seems like it's adding 20 minutes to your right. day. When you it's, just like, like, it's like buying the athleisure. Instead yes. of, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. an interesting way. To th- so now I feel better about not not doing anything. Well, like, probably... whatever you're doing is working. You're doing great. You're very successful. Oh, that's so nice for you to oh think gosh. that. Thank yeah. you you're for thinking that. <laughs> I, I've always really admired your writing. That's so sweet. So, and you guys yeah, as well. Comment. I'm, yeah. I'm so happy you. to be here with you guys. And one thing I love about your writing, Dina, is like you really, you have such a courageous, I know, I'm, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, I swear to god but like you you have a really unique style and it's i think it's really hard to stay true to that sometimes when you have like a show you know in these kind of comedy settings where like people are expecting you to kind of jump in and like rip their dick off yeah. and like go yes. for it and it and i think it's really i always have admired you for that reason it's like being courageous and authentic in in situations where sometimes it is kind of like scary and hard and challenging to not be pandering yes, as, right. as fellow soft speakers yeah i was yeah. gonna say like same like uh, you probably feel like that all the time where it's like oh god people are here to have a good time and i just can't bring that energy <laughs> <to> that. <laughs> <laughs> I just added, I was like, I'm back on captioning my own videos and I was going through new stuff lately and I was like, ah, this is why you're not getting booked. Because <laughs> I'm like, um, I, uh, right, oh right, and I'm not like this. All the time. Here's my opinion and it's coming right at you. Right, and then, uh, right. There's no oohs and ahs and I know exactly what I'm saying and I'm saying it with like this trajectory and I'm just like, oh my, could you be, so there's an element where I'm like, I might have to kick it up just a little bit but I don't know and I actually think like I found myself like um I don't want to say turning it up but like I think not as a result of like even like getting better or like consciously changing myself but like I've become so bored with stand-up that it has allowed me to like be looser like a little bit louder and like just I I don't know if you've experienced that you're over it and you don't care anymore yeah that's a I think a great place to be. <laughs> I think I, yes, absolutely. Forget it. Yeah. I have to always change. Otherwise, if I, I always have to change something. Like sometimes I'll, I'm always like putting the mic stand in the mic in the stand or like taking it out. If I'm doing the same thing, I can't, I will bomb. I right. have to always keep it changing. Yeah. That's right. why I like, like trying out one new little thing per show. Yeah. Like even now I'm, I'm like boisterous. Now I'm like doing a character. Now I'm me. Now I'm like sad. You know, it's like I'm never I feel like I'm never doing the same thing, which consequently I'm all over the place, you know, which like, I love, by the way, like, like I'm inconsistent, but um, always just liked how you like I wish I could like be more charactery and like do like 
fun stuff. I wish I could have more fun on stage when I watch you. I'm like, oh my God, she's having fun. That's really great. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Adina, it was so awesome for you to join us today. Thank you. Yeah, this was so much coming fun. On. Can you share, um, where can everyone follow you? Where can, I mean, the special's on Amazon, but do you have to have a Prime membership or can you rent it on there? Um, you do for now. I have to have a Prime membership. I think in a year you won't. I don't know. It'll be on YouTube in like a year when I get the rights back to it. Yeah. So we'll just wait a year. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a year. Wait a year. <laughs> um, but Set a reminder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, at Dina Hashem underscore. And you do really fun videos on Instagram. I love the pranks. Love the, the pranks. phone pranks. They're hysterical. <laughs> and they're different. They're not like, you know, calling and then hang up like like, on a bush it's like satirical yeah it's like elevated crank anchors but elevated to yeah we're very cerebral we're the quiche of of prank calls yeah yeah. thanks again thank you guys lady journey lady journey